everyone and welcome back to another Better Minecraft episode. This episode is going to be a bit more chill. We're going to harvest our poor neglected crop field and also begin the planning portion of our village project. So if you are excited for that, then go ahead and get comfortable and let's jump right in. At the start of today's episode, I would like to do some farmer chores and take care of our fields because they're looking a little bit rough. There are weeds everywhere and it's just time that we've harvested them and replanted them. So if I'm not mistaken, I have a bunch of stone hoes in this chest here and we'll use those to take care of our fields. I'm going to go ahead and spread the sweet potatoes a little bit and take care of this mess so that while I am taking care of the rest of my fields, the sweet potatoes can go ahead and be growing and hopefully I can spread them around even more. We got six sweet potatoes from that. So at least we doubled them. So let's go ahead and start over here at the potato field. Whenever you harvest these weeds, they'll give you wheat, which is interesting. At least we get some kind of profit from the weeds, but I'll just do my handy dandy planting and replanting with the hoe. Though with the weeds, we do have to like manually replant them, but it's still so much faster than doing it the typical vanilla way. Honestly, why do the weeds give you wheat? I don't know. Does that actually make any sense? I feel like it kind of doesn't. I honestly find harvesting my fields so relaxing. Oh, and now it's raining a nice spring rain. These stone hoes are not going to last a long time at all. Though I do think I have so many more stone hoes down at the village because whenever I was trying to upgrade Nell, I got so many hoes and pickaxes from him. But with our fields harvested, we can of course live our best farmer fantasy and also trade with the villagers and get more emeralds from them. And you know, food is pretty important too, so that's another benefit of this. I am actually really excited for spring in real life. My birthday is in spring, so obviously I love it. And also spring is just such a pretty season. Currently, the trees are already blossoming, so there's pretty blossom trees everywhere where I live, which is crazy because it's only February. At least at the time that I'm recording this, it's February. I feel like there was barely any winter. I don't think we got like any snow, which is actually really, really sad. I think I just love all the seasons. All the seasons have their own special little things that make me love them. And it also makes me feel like I'm just living in an Animal Crossing or something. Well, with that, our potatoes are harvested. And unfortunately, I don't think you can compost the weeds, which in my opinion is kind of dumb. That's like the perfect thing for you to compost. But if we go here, then they don't actually get composted. See, they just get stuck in the hopper, which is so annoying. I definitely think that you should be able to compost weeds. So I don't really know what to do with the weeds, honestly. Let me know if there's a purpose for the weeds because right now I've just been storing them. And whenever I harvest the crops, I do want to go ahead and make them into these crates because we'll be able to store so many more crops like this. And I'll go ahead and do it with the wheat as well too. I need to head down to the village to get even more hoes because I have a lot just stored in random chests around the village. Oh, maybe I can make a pathway today going from my farm to the village because we are going to start planning the village in today's episode. So honestly, that's a great idea. It's definitely overdue that we have an easy way to get up to our farm and then to the village. Let's see here. Okay, yes, I have plenty of tools. Frankly, I don't know what to do with these pickaxes. I think you can use them as fuel maybe. Oh, look, there's a baby. Wow. And I believe that I have even more hoes and stuff and just like random tents. Let's see. Yeah, we do. Okay, not that many, but yeah, we definitely have them just in random chests. Well, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get busy harvesting the rest of my fields. Just a second, look at this tomato plant. That is so cool, it actually grew on the stick. I had no idea, we had to fix all of the tomato plants like that. Remember when I was so confused and I couldn't figure this whole stick thing out? Well, I think I figured it out. So I wonder if I like put this here, like put a stick here, can I plant it on the stick? No. So do I just do it like this, maybe? I still haven't figured it completely out, but I do think that if I just stick a stick on top of the tomato plants, then like, like this? Yes, then they'll grow up. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, I can climb up the stick. Okay, uh, well, I guess I'm going to put this farm on my to-do list too. 
Farmer chores are now done and it feels so nice to have all of the fields harvested even if most of them are ready to be harvested again. And the sweet potatoes are being slowly, slowly spread around. It's taking quite a long time. But now I would like to gather some wool so that we can start mapping out this village. Also, here's how the sheep field is looking. The trees are grown now and it just looks so pretty here. Also, just real quick with shaders because it feels so cool here with all of the shadows and the light rays going through the trees. It just feels so nice with shaders and look at our adorable pond. It is so pretty. I am just absolutely obsessed with this area and I really want to put a cute little seating area by the pond. Imagine like lounging over there with a good book. That's so cute but we will go ahead and turn the shaders back off. Now I want to gather wool that I don't think I would really use. Like the pink wool, I feel like I'll use purple, maybe even blue I would use, but colors like these, I don't think I'm gonna use very often. And it looks like we have a bunch of gray, so might as well grab that too. Maybe even the brown, just because we don't have like a ton of red, might as well grab white and we'll go ahead and grab yellow. But as of now, we don't have a ton of wool, so I don't wanna grab all of the good wool and all the wool that I think that I would use. I also lost my sleeping bag somewhere, so let's go ahead and craft another one. We'll make it brown this time. I did go ahead and map out the village just a little bit it's so much nicer to have a bird's eye view of the village so i figured that doing it just real quick and marking some little boxes out would be the most beneficial way to do this and then once i actually get in the village and i'll have a better idea of what i want to do with it now that we're actually in the village planning it i can get a much better idea of how i want it to be a bird's eye view is fantastic however you don't really get the correct perspective in a bird's eye view oh my gosh there's an iron golem down there you good buddy actually i don't think he's good do you need help maybe i can help him can you get up now come on you can do it maybe he just likes being underwater you can be underwater if you want to so upon actually looking at this village this village is kind of in middle of water like there's just water literally everywhere so i don't think that will do i'm gonna have to do a lot of terraforming and kind of cover up all these water bits because i don't really want them running through my village i want each of the colors to kind of represent something we don't really have the luxury of doing that too much just because we don't really have a lot of wool but we'll try for the most part now i think that a great starting point would be mapping out a town center and then kind of building from that town center so i know i want it to be kind of over this way in a circle ish shape this map too is going to help us so much because we get to see a true bird's eye view so we can see if it's actually a circle and it kind of is and maybe i'll do brown wool as the pathways so i know i want some pathways coming off of the town center over here we can also take all of this wool we're gonna get so many resources from the village because i plan on tearing a lot of it down i don't really want to work with the village honestly i want to completely redo it so we'll have a pathway going through here and then building is coming off of it so for now buildings will be orange until we run out of orange wool once i get more wool i will actually go in here and truly map this out and especially whenever i start building the buildings i will be able to like actually map it out but as of now i'm just going to do like sparse outlines and i don't know what these buildings are either they're just buildings i want a diagonal building i think that would be so cool pretty much right where this tent is and so it will kind of be framing the town center a little bit i know it's hard to read but that's the vibe and now we will switch to red because we are out of orange so if you look closely the green is the town center the brown right here is the pathway and then we have 
have a building, a building, a building, a building. And we'll go from there. And we'll continue to have pathways running out from the town center. And I wanted to go down through here going all the way down this pathway that's already here. Because we do have our blacksmith, this is the only building that we do have to work around because I'm not rebuilding it. I just placed it there with literally no logic in mind at all, but because it's there, we have to work around it. The pathway will keep on coming up through here. And then I think it'd be cool if there was a church or something on top of this hill. I'm thinking a pretty massive church. I want it to be one of the main structures of the village. I would also like to do a little farmhouse around this tent. And I want there to be a lot of fields too, because the villagers have to eat somehow. So we'll have a farmhouse here and maybe we can put some farmer villagers permanently inside of the farmhouse so that we can easily trade with them. What are you doing inside the hole? There you go. Uhtred, get out of the hole. Uhtred, get out of the hole. Go. Why do these villagers... Okay, there you go. See, isn't that better? I think that I will have another building here right beside of the blacksmith and connecting with the path that's going to run through here. Uh, roughly like this. And I don't really know what to do with this other side over here because it's so close to the water. Last but not least, for what I currently have planned, I would like to do some major terraforming over here. If we see here, there's like this peninsula and I don't really want it to be a peninsula anymore because I want a dock somewhere in the village. And as of now, my current thought is to have a dock running through here. So I want like a full dock section where there will be like trading and stalls. And in order to have a trading and stalls, I need a bigger area to work with, not just this tiny little peninsula. Meaning I just want to connect the land a bit going through here. This is gonna take literally so much dirt, but I think it'll be worth it. It'll allow us to work with a better area because frankly, this village is not in a good spot. Like I was saying before, there's water and puddles running everywhere. It's just, I don't know, it's not ideal. So over here will be kind of a dock trading area, something like that. And then we'll have the ships like actually over here in this little bay. The good thing about the wool is that we can change ideas around really, really easily. And the design is very flexible right now. So so nothing is permanent. I really hope that the sheep farm is running because I want to map things out just a little bit better than I have them mapped out right now. Because honestly, unless you know what's happening, it doesn't look like anything. And I want to just be a little bit more specific with my outlines. I'm gonna go ahead and check on the wool farm, see if it's running, see if we have any more wool of the colors that we've been working with. And then I want to start tearing down the village. Let's see here, has it been running? Uh, I think that would probably be a no. I mean, maybe, but Probably not. We are going to get a lot of cyan and gray wool from those tents over there. So we need to take advantage of that. Let me just collect some tools real fast for the tearing down process of the village. Why are there so many creepers on the mini map? I know that they're probably all inside of caves, but that's a lot of creepers. Like, look, look at all of them. Yeah, they're definitely in caves, but like, wow. I guess first things first, let me map out this town square just a little bit because this is the central hub of this village. It's super important that we get this right. and cleared out this entire chunk over here. And I figured that the next plan of action should be to really plan out this section and we can focus all of our time and attention and resources on this little bit of the village rather than like the whole thing. So I want to actually map out some real buildings or at least a little bit better than this chaotic mess over here. But I am really happy with this town square. Maybe we should make it a little bit bigger, but other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with it. And I guess since we have tons of cyan wool, I'm going to be using the cyan wool to map out the buildings. Whenever we're walking down this pathway, I want it to feel very full of buildings. You know, those like medieval style towns where you're like walking down a little alleyway with a bunch of shops around. That's kind of the vibe. Whenever we start building these buildings, I will make them a little bit more interesting than box, maybe, or you know, it might just stay a box too. There's nothing wrong with a little box building. So over here, I want my little diagonal building. I love building diagonal buildings. I think that they just like, I don't know, it's just such a cool building style that you typically don't see in Minecraft because building on a diagonal is a little bit funky, but we'll have 
something like this so that the building will be facing into the town square. Maybe I'll move it just a little bit closer though. Don't you love how I made an entire sheep farm just to use the wool that the village gave me? The wool farm will still pay off. I think the villager likes that house. Look, he's just inside of the box. You like the box, villager. Oh, and look at the nitwit on top of the mountain. Nitwit on mountain, and he's climbing up a mountain. Wow, so many little villagers. Here is what we are looking at so far. I wanted to make the pathway curve just slightly because I feel like if we have too many straight pathways, it's just gonna get a bit boring. So I have the buildings kind of like off-centered a little bit. They're not just all lined up. But here's this little like map view. So of course we have our town square and the diagonal building and four more buildings. I think that will look pretty good. So again, we'll focus on these buildings and then I will go to the rest of the village. I need to clear all of this out and terraform a little bit. Also waiting to plan out the rest of the village will allow the sheep farm to do its thing and give us more wool. But I'm really happy with this village so far, but I'm gonna go ahead and clear out my inventory a little bit because it is so, so messy. The next thing that I would like to do is make a little project board down here in the village. And I just wanna write down all of my ideas and we can continue to add to the project board if any more ideas come to mind. Let's make the project board over here kind of close to the waypoint. I want to make it out of spruce wood and then a little bit of that azalea wood. Just look how pretty this pink color is. It's a perfect peachy pink. Maybe we can put that in the village a little bit. I think that'd be really fun. Oh my goodness, look how precious it's a heart that is so cute that definitely has to go in the village imagine it in like a little bakery or something oh my gosh i love that okay i know it's not much but it's just temporary honestly maybe we can make a cuter like bulletin board or like community board where the villagers can like write down jobs that they need done or something like that but for now, this is temporary and we can just place little signs here and write down our ideas. So here are just a couple of ideas that I have. If you all have any more ideas, please, please let me know. Of course, the bakery has to happen and the tailor shop that I talked about in last episode. And I figured that a woodworker would be so cute because there are so many different furniture items in Better Minecraft. So they could sell like chairs and tables. It'd be so cute. Of course, we have to do a tavern or an inn. And then I talked about the church that I want to place over there and then a big farmhouse over that way. Oh, hello, kitty. I don't have any fish, but you are very cute. Oh, and his head is stuck inside of the wool. Are you good? Are you good? I thought that this would be a pretty good place for a tavern or inn, and we can make it a lot bigger. Again, this is the beauty of wool. Nothing is permanent until we start placing down actual building blocks, but we will just continue to add to the project board whenever ideas come to mind. The last thing that I would like to do is build a pathway going from the village to my house, and I did kind of go ahead and sketch it out just a little bit. It's going to be very, very difficult. I don't really have too much of a plan other than like where I want the pathway to go. But because the hill is so steep, I think I'm going to struggle just a little bit. I'm going to have to do a lot of terraforming to get it to be a little bit easier to work with because I don't want this to be quite so steep, I don't think. So we'll kind of extend this out just a little bit. I definitely want to do path blocks because this is just like a little baby mountain pathway. Truly, there probably wouldn't be too many people going up and down this pathway besides me. And then I think I want to use cobblestone slabs whenever we need to go up a step. And then I will have to use stairs somewhere, I think. Definitely some kind of stairs are probably going to have to happen here. And I need more slabs. I have an outline roughly down. I do want to make it pretty because right now it's just cobblestone and path blocks. And this is a little bit scary still, but I figured making it a little bit more windy rather than just like a path straight up would make it look more natural and also make it a little bit easier to make the pathway. With this being a mountain pathway, I do think it makes sense for it to be a little bit more rugged. Now the question is, how do I make it look better? Getting some mossy steps would definitely help and some kind of fence definitely has to happen here because you could easily fall down the mountain if you were to trip down the steps. Maybe getting some trees along the path would help too. And then maybe mixing in some stone stairs as well. So we need more variation in the stairs and a lot more greenery and growth and plants. And then of course I do have to connect the pathway from the pathway to our pathway. Lots of pathways happening here. Adding just a little bit of variation in the stairs definitely helps so much. Now I just need to grab some saplings so that we can grow some trees and then also some fences. We'll add some fences to make the path a little bit safer. 
and just some fences for decoration. Maybe one here. And then another one here. I would also like to add some little lanterns to kind of light our way a little bit more. Maybe we can stick them like this. And then I'll just sprinkle some of those around. And then I do want to add some bigger oak trees. So I'm going to do the little cobblestone trick that we did over in the sheep field. And then I have no bone meal. So unfortunately, we just have to wait for it to grow all on its own. I think adding some smaller trees too will help a bit. Just to fill this space out and make it feel more natural. And also we get the beautiful particle effects from the leaves. Oh, and cute, it has like a little branch coming off of it. It's the little things. I definitely got this little idea from Waddles, by the way, wanted to give credit where credit is due. He was mentioning how adding trees to your base can just fill it out so easily and make it feel more cozy. And I completely agree with that. So I'm going to do the same with my base. And imagine walking down this pathway whenever we have a fully finished village. That's going to feel so, so cool. I'm really, really happy with how this little pathway is turning out. I was not expecting it to turn out so good, honestly. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than this. Now I do need to connect the pathway to our actual pathway. And I want to get rid of all this puzzle because it's so ugly. I grew a few big spruce trees whenever I was building my starter house over here in this puzzle patch and it's time for it to go. I wonder if I can just like hoe it and it'll turn into dirt or something. No, that is not the case. Can I do this? Okay, and it'll just turn into a dirt path, but I do need to actually replace it with regular dirt. Wow, we actually have a pathway connecting from our base to the village. Who would have thought that would ever be possible? I feel like I've been running up and down this mountain for so long now. Well, it's almost connected. Technically, there's really not a pathway to connect to in the village. I mean, sure, I could run it all the way through here, but there's really no reason to until I get the village built out a little bit more. And this poor iron golem is not looking too hot, so let's go heal him up. His name is Drist. There you go. Let's see if there are any more iron golems around here that need to be healed up. They are protecting our villagers, so I want to care for them as well. Here's a little tank. Little baby tank, there you go. All of the iron golems are looking pretty rough, honestly. Oh yeah, and do you remember our iron golem from in the water? Um, Yeah, he's still down there. There he is. I wonder if he'll get out now. Come on, get out. Get out of there so I don't feel evil for trapping you in the water. You know, it'll just be our little secret, okay? And I think that with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here. Again, completely obsessed with how this pathway turned out. I honestly did not have high hopes for it at all. But in the next episode, we will truly begin building in this village and actually starting this village project. So I hope that you are excited for that and I hope that you enjoyed this very chill episode. But I hope that you all have a lovely, lovely day and thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye.